Hello, this is Dr. Charles Nemiroff at Emory University, and I'm here to talk to you today about stigma in psychiatry. Now, normally, when we think about stigma, we think about issues that largely relate to parity. We think about why diseases of the brain, such as Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease and stroke, receive benefits far beyond the benefits that are provided to patients with schizophrenia or major depression or bipolar disorder or severe anxiety. And we have fought this parity battle for many, many years. But there are other forms of stigma that are not as easily recognized that I'd like to talk with you about. I had the opportunity this year to visit the American Heart Association meeting and present a lecture on the relationship of depression and heart disease, something I've talked with you about on this, on this website before. But one of the things I noticed that was very striking was the difference between trials conducted by cardiologists and others in cardiovascular medicine and trials conducted in psychiatry. What I mean by that is that there were tremendous differences which represent yet another form of stigma. What do I mean by that? Well, the large number of patients involved in trials for the development of new statins, for example, or the development of new antihypertensives is strikingly larger than those uh, that are, con uh, are comprised clinical trials in psychiatry. So that it's not unusual for clinical trials in cardiovascular medicine to have 10 to 40,000 patients in a study. Whereas in psychiatry, we often have trials that are comprised of three, four, five hundred patients. And even the large NIH sponsored trials, the KD trial, the STAR D trial, the STEP BD trial, they had no more than a few thousand patients uh, in the studies. This results in a, uh, a reduction in the amount of statistical power we have. And one of the reasons uh, this is, in fact, the state of the art is that pharmaceutical companies do not want to invest in trials in psychiatry. And the reason they don't is that trials in psychiatry uh, are very difficult for many reasons. They're difficult because the difference between an active treatment and a placebo, that is the uh, uh, ability to actually show a difference is quite problematic, much more difficult in studying psychiatric disorders than, say, in studying hypertension. So that from an investment point of view, pharmaceutical companies are loath to uh, uh, make this kind of investment. In addition, there's another factor that is really important to discuss here and that is the fact that pharmaceutical companies um, have to deal with an entire segment of the population that represents the anti-psychiatry movement. There are no groups in our society that talk about um, leukemia as a disease made up by physicians or pharmaceutical companies. Yet there is a large anti-psychiatry movement that really and truly suggests that there's no such thing as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or depression. These factors that really comprise yet another form of stigma unfortunately work against those of us in the mental health field to try to advance treatments of these devastating disorders. I want to thank you for joining us today. This is Dr. Charles Nemiroff of Emory University.